Hello everyone, it's Molly with All Ears and today I am back at the Magic Kingdom to bring you an all new video. And what's super cool about this video? A lot of you requested to see it. I am headed into Liberty Square to do a historical tour to show all these little details that you may not notice, all these historical references I, I, in Liberty Square. Excited? I feel like it's USAP history class all over again, but like more fun. So get excited. Liberty Square, cool thing, fun fact to know, number one. Before I get in there and point out all the historical details, I gotta tell you, this was all Walt's idea. Walt never got to see it, but he had the idea for a side street off of Main Street USA in Disneyland called Liberty Street. And at the end of it, there would be an exhibit where you could meet all of the United States presidents and they'd come to life before your eyes. Unfortunately, the technology didn't exist at the time, so the idea got shelved. However, in 1964-65 at the World's Fair, Walt and his team developed great moments with Mr. Lincoln, where they were able to develop the technology to make human audio animatronics. Now, the idea for Liberty Street remained in a lot of the Imagineers' minds, and when Walt Disney World opened in 1971, they created Liberty Square, with an exhibit where the presidents come to life before your eyes, the Hall of Presidents. Kind of cool to know that even though Walt never got to see it, he was way ahead of his time, and this was all his idea. Let's go check it out. So the story of Liberty Square actually begins in Frontierland. All the way from Big Thunder Mountain through Liberty Square, it's chronologically taking you on a journey back through time. Starting at Big Thunder Mountain, though it's the height of the gold rush, the mid 1800s, you'll keep progressing back through time. And eventually you're gonna come to the Diamond Horseshoe, which is the last thing you see right before you enter Liberty Square. Now the Diamond Horseshoe was designed after the saloons of St. Louis, because St. Louis is known as the gateway to the West. Keep moving through Liberty Square and you're going to come to the Hall of Presidents, which is the late 1700s. You'll see 1787 on the top of the building, which is the year the Constitution was ratified. And the Hall of Presidents building itself was modeled after Independence Hall in Philadelphia. Keep moving through Liberty Square, eventually you'll hit the Columbia Harbor House, which is the early 1800s, reminiscent of the Boston area. And eventually you'll hit Haunted Mansion, which is the early 1700s, designed after a Gothic style manor house in Hudson Valley, New York. Now, if you were to keep moving geographically, both here at the Magic Kingdom and in the world, uh, you would go across the Atlantic and you would hit England. If you keep moving here at Magic Kingdom, you're gonna go into Fantasyland. Now, what's the first attraction on your right? Peter Pan's flight. Where's that story take place? England. Coincidence? I think not. Another really cool thing about the dates here in Liberty Square is that a lot of the buildings, because there's people's homes, have street numbers, like this one's 24. Nothing weird about that, except for if you were to add an 18 to any of the numbers, so for example, 1824, that becomes the year this style of architecture was popular in colonial America. Pretty neat, huh? Historical tour of Liberty Square, stop number three, the Liberty Tree. Obviously, if you've come to Liberty Square before, you've seen the Liberty Tree. It's kind of the symbol of the land. Well, the Liberty Tree was something that was very common in colonial towns in the pre-revolutionary war days. The Sons of Liberty, men's group, classic, would get together and they would discuss politics and the war, and they called the tree the Liberty Tree as a symbol for their fight for independence. So when they opened up Magic Kingdom and they were gonna have Liberty Square, of course they needed a Liberty Tree. And legend has it that Walt saw this tree on the southern part of property, kind of near where Animal Kingdom is today. And he was like, yep, that's it. That's the one, that's the most beautiful tree in the world. Let's get it to Magic Kingdom. Problem was, this thing weighs over 35 tons. So it fell on Imagineer Bill Evans, who is also the Imagineer responsible for designing the jungle of the Jungle Cruise. Uh, he figured out that they could insert two steel dowels into the base of the tree and then hook it up to a crane. They then pulled it, uh, or lifted it, hoisted it. I don't really know how cranes work. Shocking, I'm sure. Um, and they were able to carry it here to the Magic Kingdom, across the Liberty Bridge, where it almost fell. Terrifying. And they were able to fashion it here in Liberty Square. 
Now, once they were had it all set ready where they wanted it to go, they removed those steel dowels and they inserted wooden ones. The only problem was the tree then got sick and it was diseased and they were afraid that after all of that, they were gonna have to move the tree. But Bill figured it out again. He removed the wooden dowels, that part of the tree. They filled in some of the base with cement and they took part of a smaller oak tree and attached it to this one, wired it all together. And guess what? It's still living today and it's over 130 years old. And as a final touch, they hung 13 lanterns on it to represent, of course, the 13 original colonies. The Liberty Tree was such a feat by the Walt Disney Imagineers and Bill Evans' team that it's actually not the symbol of Walt Disney horticulture. If you ever see anyone working with any of the plants, take a look at their polo and you will see a symbol of the Liberty Tree. Yeah, when you're walking by the tree, take a look up, look at those lanterns, and then also look at all the metal cabling. That's what's holding it together. Because again, it was diseased, but still going strong. Fun fact, historical stop number four here in Liberty Square, the Liberty Bell. Now in 1976, when it was the American Bicentennial, the United States gave each of the 50 states a replica of the Liberty Bell cast from the mold of the original that resides in Pennsylvania, of course. And the Walt Disney Company thought, hey, you know who doesn't need two of those? Pennsylvania, because they already have the original one. So they appealed to the state of Pennsylvania to see if they could have the second one, the copy, because again, it's a copy when you have the OG, and if they could have that copy, that replica, and put it here in Liberty Square. The state of Pennsylvania approved and it was installed here and it was opened in 1989. Guess which day? July 4th. <laughs> so again, this is a replica of the real thing. It's got the crack running through it and it's surrounded by 13 flags. Again, the 13 flags of the original colonies. Liberty Square fun fact number five is that they always try and stay in a three color palette when planting flowers here. I'm sure you can guess what they are, red, white, and blue. I also think now's as good a time as any to remind you what this cobblestone path is running through the center of Liberty Square. Maybe you blocked it out from my last video. Maybe you haven't seen my last video yet. Again, what are you doing? Go watch it after this one. But I'm gonna remind you that that cobblestone path is not the pathway to freedom. It's not freedom trail. It is, unfortunately, poop. You heard me correctly. Back in the colonial days, they didn't have indoor plumbing, obviously. So people had chamber pots when they were full toss it out into the street. Horses would trudge through it, it would rain, and that would create a sewage river running through the streets of colonial America. Disney's so good at details, they obviously had to include that here in Liberty Square. And they took it one step further. There are no restrooms or water fountains. There's no running water here in Liberty Square. If you wanna use the restroom, you gotta keep going to Fantasyland or head back to Frontierland. And I know you're thinking, Molly, I have eaten at Columbia Harbor House, I've eaten at Liberty Tree Tavern, and I've used the restroom there are bathrooms in Liberty Square. Well, yes, of course, the restaurant code says there has to be restrooms in any restaurant, and there are bathrooms in both of those places. They technically aren't in Liberty Square. The restrooms are so far back in the Columbia Harbor House that technically they hang in Fantasyland. And at Liberty Tree Tavern, technically they live in Frontierland. So what I said was true. There is no running water in Liberty Square. Attention to detail. If you look above this green gate right here, you are gonna see a symbol of four hands holding onto four wrists. This is the symbol of the fireman's carry, and it's here because of Benjamin Franklin, who started the volunteer firefighter department. Now in the colonial days, if you donated to the fireman's department, you could put the symbol above your house. And then when, or not when, but if, but probably when, because there were a lot of house fires back then with all the candles and everything. Um, if your house caught on fire, firemen would come out, they'd see that symbol, good to go. They'd take care of your house. Now, if you didn't have that symbol and they came to your house and then got another call, well, good luck. I'd, I'd donate. Also seems like a good time to remind you that if this window right above me there, there are gonna be two lanterns. Remember, one if by land, two if by sea. Paul Revere was gonna let us know. And of course, it was by sea. <laughs> Liberty Square historical tour thing number seven to look for. Have you ever noticed that it looks like the shutters are crooked on a lot of the buildings? That's not because the Imagineers lost their levels for that day. That's because back in the colonial days in the Revolutionary War, any extra metal was scrapped and turned into hear bullets. Hear oh, I am James Jefferson, the town crier of Liberty Square. Watch. Great moments in history. This one features more. And here's what you will take away in all your minds. Oh, it's a so as I was saying before, the Muppets so rudely interrupted me. Kidding, the Muppets can interrupt me anytime they want to. I love them. 
This is actually probably my favorite little detail in Liberty Square. The shutters aren't hung crooked by mistake. The Imagineers, of course, knew what they were doing. In the Revolutionary War times, metal was precious, and it was asked that any scrap metal or any spareable metal could be melted down and turned into bullets for the cause. So people donated things like their hinges that were hanging up their shutters. They still wanted to hang their shutters, of course. So after they donated their metal hinges, they decided to use leather straps. And what happens to leather when it's outside, exposed to the rain, to the sun, to the heat, normal wear and tear? It stretches. And therefore your shutters, which started straight, are now hanging crooked. This is probably my favorite, favorite detail in Liberty Square, because that's so cool. Who would have thought to do that? The Imagineers. Duh. Historical tour stop number eight, the Christmas shop. One of my favorite places all year long. So have you ever noticed that the Christmas shop actually looks like it's three different buildings and not just one? That's how it was designed. It was designed to look like three different storefronts coming together to celebrate Christmas in their own unique way. The first one is a farmhouse belonging to some Pennsylvania Dutch family members. And they've got their decorations out. They're ready to welcome their neighbors and family and friends into their home for Christmas. And if you want to know the name of them, check on the door. There's a painted heart with their family name, which is Keppel which is actually Walt Disney's grandfather's name. The second storefront is a wood carver, and you can see that he actually has a sign out front advertising that he is a woodworker, and he makes things like toys and different things. And if you look inside the shop, you can actually check out some of his wood carvings on the shelves. They've got little toys, little wagons, things of that nature. And the third storefront is a music teacher's home. How do I know that? Well, there's actually a sign right outside connected to a music note, and it is uh, advertising the music lessons given by instructor Ichabod Crane. Now, where do I know that name? Ah, yes, the legend of Sleepy Hollow. And if you look across the street from the Christmas shop, what's right there? Sleepy Hollow. Coincidence again? No, it's never a coincidence. It's always on purpose, because it's always amazing. To take it one step further, the house uh, of William Irving is what inspired the design for Sleepy Hollow. William Irving is the author of The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, which is also why the Sleepy Hollow mascot on the sign is the Headless Horseman. I highly recommend going to Sleepy Hollow and grabbing that Nutella waffle with all the fruit on it. It's delicious. I also highly recommend Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party, where you can see the Headless Horseman run down Main Street. It's terrifying and awesome all in one awesome historical thing to check out in Liberty Square number nine. Obviously we have to go into the Hall of Presidents. There's a lot of really cool stuff inside the rotunda before you even get to see the show. First thing you're going to notice when you walk in is that giant seal on the ground and it's guarded off for a reason. That's because there's only two places in the country where you can see a carpet with that seal of the United States on it. Here in Liberty Square and in the Capitol building in DC. It was actually an act of Congress to get Disney to be able to display that here at the Hall of Presidents. Additionally, because of that seal, as well as all the artifacts that are inside the Hall of Presidents, it's actually known as a federally recognized presidential museum. Let's go check out some of that stuff. We've got a lot of cool stuff like Bill Clinton sneakers, some horseshoes from George W. Bush. My personal favorite so far, this bolo tie worn by Ronald Reagan, but I wonder what the oldest artifact is I can find. I did it. Oldest one. Doesn't get any older than that. That is a knee and shoe buckle worn by George Washington himself. Pretty amazing. There's also this dinner plate used in the Washington era. 1784 to 85. That is just crazy. Ooh, another old gem here. Thomas Jefferson's pocket watch. Honestly, so cool. Also got James Monroe's scale. Baseball cards collected by George W. Bush. And a telegraph set from Franklin D. Roosevelt. All of these items have either been given or donated by presidential families or museums around the country to the Walt Disney Company to display here. And you know what? It'll help justify pulling your kids out of school to go to Disney World because they get to learn a little something and see some presidential stuff. Super important thing to look at. Fun thing number 10. It's also in the Hall of Presidents. It deserves its own thing because it's so cool. 
milestone number, if you will. Well, Walt Disney's favorite president was Abraham Lincoln. He really admired how he stood up and was such a great leader during such a different, difficult time in our country. That's why Great Moments with Mr. Lincoln was Great Moments with Mr. Lincoln, not Great Moments with Mr. Taft or another president. No offense to Taft. But anyway, Walt Disney loved Abraham Lincoln. So when they were designing the bust for Great Moments with Mr. Lincoln and this bust right here, Blaine Gibson, who's the sculptor behind all of the presidents, as well as a lot of other animatronics that you know and love, he actually used a mask that Abe himself wore. Can you believe that? That's so old. Abe himself wore a mask that was then used to model this bust for the Hall of Presidents. Crazy. Historical thing number 11, another cool thing about the Hall of Presidents is that a lot of the modern era presidents actually wear their own clothes. These are things that the families or the presidents themselves have donated to Disney to be displayed in the Hall of Presidents on their animatronic. Another cool thing is that a lot of the presidents voice themselves, starting with Washington. Just kidding, starting with Clinton. Clinton was the first president to record his own voice for his animatronic and every president since him has done so as well. Our tour of Liberty Square is drawing to a close, but I'm gonna leave you with one more super cool fact. The Liberty Bell Riverboat was designed because it fits really well with both the Frontierland and the Liberty Square theming. And as you're headed through Liberty Square into Frontierland, you have to cross over this little stream that they call the Little Mississippi. It's designed to represent the Mississippi River, which flows into the rivers of America where the Liberty Bell is on, which is designed after the Mississippi, the Missouri, and all the other rivers that people would use. I did just run into that pole. All the other rivers that ferry boats like the Liberty Bell would shuttle people up and down. And thus, we have seamlessly transitioned out of the Liberty Square Colonial Revolutionary War time into the wild, wild west of Frontierland, just like that. All right, y'all, I'm standing outside of the Haunted Mansion and I'm not talking about it. Sorry to disappoint friends, but the Haunted Mansion is so much detail, such an incredible backstory, and now there's that amazing interactive queue. I could do a whole video just on the Haunted Mansion. Is that something you wanna see? Definitely let me know in the comments. All right, y'all, that wraps up our historical tour of Liberty Square here in the Magic Kingdom. Hopefully you had fun. What was your favorite thing that you learned? Let me know in the comments. Also, let me know what video you want to see next. In the meantime, rate, review, subscribe to our channel, follow us on Instagram at all at earsnet. And until next time, y'all, I'm Molly, and it's been magical and historical. <laughs> want to see more of my videos? Click over here. Want to subscribe? You can do that right here. And also, ring that notification bell to make sure you get instantly notified anytime we post a new video. Thanks for following. See you real soon.